Hello, people. It is I, Chavid Jadenborough. It has come to my attention in recent years that... Get out of my way. It has come to my attention in recent years that documentary has begun to go astray of its original path of education and become just a dumb meme series, which none of us like. So today, we are going back to our roots, and we will be educating you here on the numerous different species of birds that inhabit the Australian wilderness. I hope you enjoy. Oh boy, we're starting off here with a great find. This right there is a red-breasted lawn bird. It's quite incredible. It's known for lawning. It's also well known for its very bright yellow bill. They achieve this yellowness by going around and sticking it inside of a banana for several days. They stand there perfectly still and their bill absorbs the essence of the banana and then it makes it yellow. So that way they're all Gucci with the ladies and the ladies love them. It's crazy what sexual selection will do to birds. So just remember next time you're bored, you're not as bored as this guy was for the many days that he stood there just standing there with his beak inside of a banana. That right there is the shiny fly gulper. Shiny fly gulpers are very well known for being shiny and for gulping flies. It's it's kind of an, a, an appropriate name. That, that crowing sound is the sound it's making. They're masters of infrasonic sound. They don't have to move their mouths to do it. They're quite incredible, but also loud. Oh, here he goes again. This is his, um, his mating call. It's how he attracts the, the females by being the best ventriloquist. That is a Johnson's brown bird. This bird was named after Richard S. Johnson V of Scotland, who was a king. He was the one who came over here to America first, and he discovered this bird and named it after himself, the selfish prick. But this bird is pretty well known for being pretty standard and brown and it just eats seed and it doesn't sing and it just kind of sits in trees and it's not pretty and it's just kind of a really basic bland boring bird that no one really knows or talks about. Now this one's a cool one. This is the least blackbird. Now you might be wondering, well if this is the least blackbird then what is the most blackbird? To be honest, I've been asking the same question for 20 years. Oh my gosh, it's the greater blackbird! Look how great he is! As he screams! It's a very common known fact that these birds are blind and they have to use echolocation in order to see. Which is why you always see them screaming everywhere. Because basically he's using his echolocation abilities to know where I am. He's like a dolphin. This has given them the nickname of land sharks. Why? I, I, I honestly don't know. Oh heck, there he goes. Bye, Mr. Greater Blackbird. Hopefully you, your echolocation works well and you'll navigate those trees in a some semi-efficient manner. Oh frick, I think he's attacking something. How do I know this? I, I don't. I just do. There he goes. It appears as though he is now attacking a hook-billed dwarf eagle. It appears as though the greater blackbirds have evolved to become carnivores. Predators even. And they feed on big game. And dangerous game at that. I mean, this is like a coyote trying to take down a lion. But look at him go. He's slowly wearing it down. Piece by piece, feather by feather, he will pluck every single one from this bird until it falls from the sky. Oh my goodness, over there are a pair of gray-headed longbills. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth are these called the gray-headed longbill? Where are they going? Okay, I found them again. Now, the reason why this guy is called the gray-headed longbill is because the dude that found him, uh, Andrew Johnson, uh, as it turns out, he was actually colorblind. And so, he looked at this and was like, man, this dude's got a great head. So he named it that. It was actually this bird that is how everyone figured out that he was colorblind. Because everyone was like, what? That bird's head is red. And so then he went, oh, I guess I'm colorblind. I'm 50 years old. I had no idea. And so then why didn't people change it? Well, because he already wrote it in a paper. And it would have required a lot of, a lot of effort. 
like some effort to change it like people would have had to write something saying hey we're not gonna use this word anymore for it and no one wanted to do that so the name stuck unfortunately because scientists are a bunch of lazy bastards oh what is he doing oh okay i guess he was just having a stroke or something that right there is a black capped pillywig he's a cute little sucker it's currently hypothesized that he might be the love child of a bird and a lemon but unfortunately before we can know the truth Further research is needed. Right there on top of that barn is an American native bird. Quite an extraordinary species. They're very, they're the most native bird to North America. In fact, they're so native that it is believed that every single other North American bird is evolved or descended from this species. You know, my son, David Attenborough, he had some as pets when he was a, a kid. They evolved into five species alone while I ki while he kept them. It was quite, quite the sight to behold. What's it got? What the heck has it got in its mouth? It, is that, what is that? It, is that the bite of 87? That right there is the Chad Swallow. The Chad Swallow is well known for just giving up on the ability to fly and they grow these large tumor-like structures outside of their body and they attach themselves to tall buildings slash bonds. And then they just sit there for the rest of their lives with only their heads mobile and they photosynthesize, but only sometimes. Now, I think there is a small pond in one of the little gullies or hollers or whatever a small indentation inside of a forest is called. So let's see if we can find that real quick. Here we see a pair of white-sided false penguins. As you can see they're swimming but they're not diving which is why they're false penguins. Right now they're eating parasites off their back. It's actually their, that's they're specialized for it. It's their main source of food. They are very specialized to grow parasites on their back and then they eat them. Uh, you'd think that this would be some counterintuitive because the parasites are getting their energy from them. Like, how does that work? They're kind of a closed system. Well, you know, somehow they make it work. More study is needed, clearly. It's also a common known fact that these guys, their, their favorite game is uh, pin the tail on the donkey. And over here, we have a clown-faced gooey duck. Oh, and he's underwater now. Incredible. I didn't know they could swim. This is a new discovery for science. <laughs> what the hell happened here? So now you might be wondering why the clown face? Oh, and there goes that one. Oh, maybe eventually I'll be able to talk about them. Go home, Grandpa. You're drunk. So these guys, they like to feed on uh, shrimp and uh, the shrimp's children and their eggs and stuff. Uh, it's a favorite food of theirs. They're filter feeders. They're like baleen whales. They just go warm. Just like that, but they do it underwater. Uh, so we can't see, so you have to imagine. Their their jaws like detach from their body. And they can actually use it. It's a common fact. These guys have been around since the Mesozoic. And they can use their jaws to uh, eat T-Rexes whole. I mean, it's a, it's a common fact. I meant to say Triceratops, not T-Rex. I got my facts confused there. I'm sorry. But, um... Now these guys are filthy low lives, and they have to live in this pond. Very sad. This looks like prime mountain goat habitat. Keep your eyes peeled, boys. Right there is a dog bird. It's currently swimming, looking for the stick that's owner through. It's a very loyal creature. Oh, oh God, he just drowned. Oh. That got dark real quick. Oh my gosh, I found another American native bird. Now, as you can tell from looking at this bird right here, uh, the American native bird is polymorphic. This right here is the city morph that is well adapted for going around and living in cities. And it kind of like just picks at the sidewalks and it eats the cement. Oh my God, guys, I, I'm laying on the ground right now. I don't want them to see me, but over there is a pair of wandering child stealers. They're very deadly. They're very deadly creatures. They're famous for stealing children. It's where they get their name from. I think I'll be fine because it's just two. Oh no, they're stretching their wings. They're getting ready to hunt. Oh God. If there was five here though, I'd be fearing for my life. 
Lots of people think Imperial hook build uh, snow capped things that those 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 big creatures will steal their children. But in reality it's these ones. The ones you least expect. Beware the child stealers. They, oh god, I think they've noticed me. They're raising their heads. So they're alarmed. Oh god. He's doing the threat display. Oh god. He's limbering up. I don't know if I'll be able to get out alive. I don't think I have a choice. I think I'm gonna have to make a run for it. Okay, three, two. Well, it appears as though I'm now lost in the woods, uh, but you don't have to be, because featuring the all new stick, the only GPS locating stick in the world. Just tell it where you want to be, or where you are, I mean, and it will f find your spot. Hey, stick, where am I? I've been scammed. And that right there is a Seattle Seahawk. Quite an extraordinary species known for their seahawkiness. You might not have heard of this one because unfortunately it is an endangered species. There are only about four left in the entire world and only zero in the state of Pennsylvania. It is very, very sad and unfortunate, but luckily the species is not recovering and will soon be extinct. Wait, did you hear that? I think I might just heard some black cap chickadee dee 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 wax melts. Though I know I just said that we don't know why they have a wax bill, there are some hypotheses. One of them is that they might be useful in candle production. Another one is that they could actually use their wax to help wax things. What are they waxing exactly? A good question. I'll try to ask and see. Hey! Why do you wax things? Respond, please! Prick. And that right there is a white eyebrowed pillywig. It's related to the the whatever the other one was called. Only except this one is stupid. And that right there is the red-breasted white-bellied blue field bird of the Americas west of the Rocky Mountains. It's a very long name, I know, I know, I know, but it is necessary. But anyways, this guy here, he enjoys long walks on the beach, and the beach. As you can see, I'm now being approached by a pack of Velociraptor. They're a lot less scary than they appear in the movies, but, you know, we can't have it all. Look at this cocky son of a gun. You are cock of nothing. That right there on that bird feeder is a red finch. That's definitely what it would be called. Why would you name it anything else? That right there is a Horicon's brown bird. Now you might be wondering what separates it from Johnson's brown bird. Well, you see, in Johnson's brown bird, the tail is about half the length of the body. But in Horicon's brown bird, the body is about twice the length of the tail. And that, that is how you tell the difference. It's nighttime now. I don't just have the lens cap over the camera. That would be stupid. Well, thank you for joining me here today on this episode of Documentary. And hopefully you learned something new about the beautiful birds that inhabit the environment that they inhabit. I hope that your day is Gucci. Be careful of people or things who might be beaver was here that might be kind of sus i hope that you will see us in the next episode where we investigate the tales of the bigfoot whose feet were so big that he had tuberculosis goodbye oh my god 
They found me. They're following me. I haven't. I, I've never. Oh.